Well, August 29th is National Coffee Day, which is a huge day for me. Right after Christmas, Easter, my wedding, the birth of my kids, even before my own birthday. So today I want to tell you the story about how steam really got Italian coffee culture and the world's coffee culture off the ground. But you know, I normally greet you in English, but since my last name is Falcone, I'm going to greet you in the native tongue of my ancestors. Now, since not everyone can speak the Romance languages, we're going to translate it for you at the bottom. Are you ready? Have a treat. Benvenuti alla cultura del vapore. Mi chiamo Brent. Mi sento male. Grazie per la visione de mi mangiare formaggio. Well, by the late 1800s, coffee culture was spreading through Italy with the proliferation of small cafes serving lots of coffee. So, in, uh, at that, that time, because of the age of steam, an inventor by the name of Angelo Moriando created this machine that would use steam and water to brew large batches of coffee. It was okay. It didn't work super well. So it wasn't until 1901 that Luigi Bezzera patented a machine that created enough steam pressure to force water through ground coffee. Now his machine had a large boiler with chambers filled with water. So as steam formed, it pushed the water into the espresso, and for the first time, a cup of coffee was brewed in a matter of seconds. The chamber also acted as radiators, allowing the steam to condense, taking the temperature from 250 degrees to 195 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the ideal temperature for making coffee. Now since the boiler was heated with an open flame, they could really never control the pressure reliably. And they only made about two bars of pressure. Ideally, you need about nine bars of pressure to make good espresso. So there was the hang up there. But the second wave came through when a guy named Desiodero Pavoni bought Pizzera's patents and made some changes. While his machines could make up to a thousand cups an hour, the steam would leave the coffee with a bitter taste and couldn't create enough pressure to make good espresso. So we still have this problem where we can only produce two bars of pressure until after World War II, when a gentleman named Achille Gaggia created a new machine with a new concept, and here's how he did it. So essentially, he still had a boiler, but the boiler, the steam, forced the water into a cylinder. From there, it went into a spring-loaded piston operated by a lever that the barista would operate that further pressurized the water. Now, this invention really solved two big problems. First, it eliminated the need for a huge boiler, to try and create a lot of steam pressure. But secondly, it created that pressure they were looking for. It went from two bars to eight to 10 bars, which is still the industry standard to use to make espresso. So along the way, other inventions came along from there. The steam wand was uh, invented, and along with the double boiler machine. Now the double boiler machine really has a dedicated boiler for water to make espresso, but it also has direct steam to use to froth the milk. Now, if you remember our episode from several years ago, um, uh, my friend Alan Butts, who owns one of the finest coffee shops in the world, told us why we want to steam milk and not just use warm milk. So there you have it, guys. The history of how steam started the whole coffee revolution in Italy and that espresso that you enjoy right now. Well, thanks for joining me on this week's Steam Culture. Hope you enjoyed that episode about how steam was used to make coffee. Maybe you knew that. If you didn't, you know now because you watch Steam Culture. Join me next week. I'll have something for you. In the meantime, go Google espresso machines and how they work. There's some fantastic videos. We'll include some links for you. But while you're out there, come find the rest of the content that we have for you. I will see you next week.